In this video, we're going to take a look at the modulus and argument of a complex number. So to begin with here, let's take a look at the definition for the modulus of a complex number. So the modulus of a complex number is the distance from the origin to that number on an argon diagram. If I just note the origin here, note that as O, and let's say I've got a complex number here, Z. Okay, so this is my complex number Z. So the distance here from the origin of our complex number here, Z, let me just write this down over here. So for the modulus, okay, if I've got a complex number here, Z, and let's just use a general complex number here, so X plus IY, okay, then this distance here, this would be the modulus, the way that we denote the modulus here, the notation that we use is the same notation from A level math. So it's going to be the complex number Z here between these two bars. And this distance then will simply be an application of Pythagoras. So it's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, just from this complex number here. So that's the modulus of a complex number. Let me say it's just the distance from the origin to that number on an argon diagram. What about the argument then? So for the argument of a complex number, so let me just write this down over here. So for the argument of a complex number, what this represents is the angle that's made with the vector and the positive real axis. Okay, so again, we've got this complex number here, z, which is equal to x plus i, y, just a general complex number there. And the argument here, for this complex number, if I use alpha to represent that angle, then we get this here by taking tan inverse, or tan inverse of y over x. Okay, so it's just basic trigonometry here. So the way that we denote the argument here is arg z. Now we have to be slightly careful because the argument does depend on what quadrant we're in. So if we're in this quadrant here, then my argument is simply this here. It would be tan inverse of y over x. So that's nice and straightforward. That would be this angle here, which is alpha. So that's fine. Like I said, the argument here, arg z, that would be alpha. But what about if we're in this quadrant here? Okay, so I've got my complex number here. Okay, what about this angle that's formed here? Again, if I call this alpha, what would the argument be here for this complex number z? So arg z here, what would that be? Well, the argument in this case, because we're looking for the angle that the vector makes with the positive real axis, this would simply be pi minus this angle here, alpha. So that's pi minus alpha, okay? So let me just get rid of the notation there for the origin, just so I can draw my next uh, complex number here. What about if we're in this quadrant here now? If we're in this quadrant here, what we're looking for now is this angle here. So again, if I call this alpha, again, we're looking for the argument here for this complex number. Now, for the argument here, we can just simply think about what we've got for these two quadrants here. So if we're in this quadrant here, that would simply be minus what we got here. So it's going to be minus i minus alpha. Okay? You just take this result here and just take, times it by minus 1. That would simply be your argument here if we're in this quadrant. And then finally, if we're in this quadrant here, again with the angle alpha, then my argument here, arg z, again, this would be the negative of this here. So if my argument for z here is alpha, then the argument of z in this quadrant here will be minus alpha. Okay? And there we have it. So that's everything we need there for our introduction to the modulus and argument of a complex number. What we're going to do now is just take a look at one practice question for the modulus and argument of a complex number. So if we just take a look at this one practice question here, then we've been given some complex numbers and we're asked to find the modulus and argument for those complex numbers. And the question does also say that we should give the modulus as an exact third if appropriate and to give the argument in radians to two decimal places. So let's get started here with part A. So the first thing that I should find here is the modulus. So the modulus is hopefully nice and straightforward. This is just simply an application of Pythagoras. So we've now got the square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared. So 1 squared plus 5 squared. 
So in this case here, it's going to be 1 plus 25, giving us the square root of 26. Okay, so that's the modulus there for z. We now need the argument. Okay, so we now need arg z. So for the argument here of this complex number z, the first thing that I'm going to do here is plot this complex number on this argon diagram here. Okay, so it's 1 plus 5i. That means we go one unit along and up five. Let's just say that's here. Okay. So from the origin to z here, if I just draw the corresponding vector, we'll get something that looks like this. Now what we're looking for here with the argument in this quadrant is this angle that's found with our corresponding vector and the positive real axis. Okay. So in this quadrant, like we said, the argument here, arg z, is given simply as this angle here, which is alpha. So to find that then, hopefully again, nice and straightforward here, just some basic trigonometry. So it's going to be tan inverse of 5 over 1, which would simply be 5. So just put this into your calculator. Just obviously make sure that you're working in radians with your calculator. So in that case then, to two decimal places, I get 1.37 radians. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to A. For B now, again, just starting with the exact same method, we just need the modulus to begin with. The modulus of Z here, again, this would be an application of Pythagoras, so it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. Okay, now you might notice straight away that this is one of the Pythagorean triples, so it's going to be 9 plus 16, giving me the square root of 25 which is simply equal to 5 there, okay? So that's the modulus there for B, and again, we just need the argument now. We now need arg z here. So again, what I'm going to do here to begin with is just plot this complex number. We go 3 units along and then down 4 units, so 3 units along here, and then down 4 units, let's just say that's there, okay? So again, if I just draw the corresponding vector, it'll look something like that. And what I'm looking for now is this angle here, so that's alpha. But when we're working in this quadrant here for the argument of z, the argument of z here in this quadrant is minus alpha. Okay? So if we can find alpha, we just take the negative of that. Okay? So the argument of z here, well, to begin with, let's just find tan inverse. So tan inverse here. This is for B. We're looking for tan inverse of 4 over 3. So 4 over 3, which if you put this into your calculator, this should give you 0 0.93 to two decimal places. That's 0 0.93 radians. So if we want the negative of that, just times it by minus 1, or just put a minus in front. So we get for the argument of Z here for B, minus 0 0.93 radians there. Okay. So that's our solution to B. And then finally, for C here, again, just following, following the exact same pattern, we need the modulus to begin with. So the modulus of Z here. So again, using Pythagoras, this is the square root of minus 2 squared plus 1 squared. I'm going to get 4 plus 1, giving me the square root of 5. That's the modulus of Z there. We now need the argument again. We need arg z here. So for the argument of z here, again, if we just plot this complex number, it's minus 2 plus i. So we go two units to the left here along the real axis and up one unit. Let's just say that's there. If I plot the corresponding vector as well, I'll join it up with the corresponding vector. What I'm looking for here is this angle alpha. But now, because we're looking for the argument here, we're looking for the angle that's formed here between our positive real axis and alpha, or sorry, our complex number here, z. But in that case, then we're working in this quadrant here, the argument of z would simply be pi minus alpha, okay? So in that case then, we need to find alpha to begin with. So for c here, we need tan inverse of, it would be one over two, so tan inverse of a half. So tan inverse of a half, I just quickly put that into my calculator here. I've missed that one off. So tan inverse of a half. 
So what I'm going to get here is 0 0.463647 and so on. Now because I need to find um, pi minus this answer here, that's going to be pi minus 0 0.463647 and so on. So again, put this into your calculator now. So if I do pi minus this answer here, and now I, all I need to do here is give my answer to two decimal places. This is going to be 2.68 there. Okay, so we get 2.68 radians. And there we have it. So that's our solution to C. And that gives the solution to question one overall. And that brings the end of this video on finding the modulus and argument of a complex number. In the next video, we're going to take a look at modulus argument form.